So, Ebenezer, I've seen a bit of uh, different uh, projections, outlook, estimates given by your folks, the, uh, a lot of analysts, and of course, traders, treasurers. In terms of what the OMO, uh, our expected OMO rate hike is going to give us, and the treasury bills, and of course, the bonds market now, where do you see more of attraction? Where do you see more of interest? Which are you going to buy more? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it depends on where, where your strategy lies. Of course, you, you, you know that treasury bills are uh, short term and then use are trending up. Of course, we see them going beyond the 14 levels because uh, liquidity is tight. We, we, we saw resistance from the APS, APS Bank earlier in the year and now city is very tight and people do not want to hold this level. All these bills are 12.5 anymore. So as this pressure continues, we know that the FPI guys are still living and this is a prediction year which is causing that, that movement. We have a pressure on the dollar. So the only way to keep this uh, market stable, especially on the FX side, is to keep uh, fixed income rates going up. So people are still going to continue to be to be bullish on the treasury bills. The homo, of course, we keep on mopping and asset system liquidity. So I see where it's going up on both sides, both on the treasury bills and, and uh, on the bonds. So for bonds, uh, people are going to be doing a lot on the auctions because you won't see a lot of activity from the secondary market. So for auctions, you, after auctions, people will go quiet unless they have a short, to co a short position to cover. So you're going to see a lot of the primary market issues. That's what is going to happen. So you guys are the debt side of the capital market. have denied a lot of investors some kind of interest in the equity side of the market now that stocks. But then let's look at what um, FX is talking, uh, is actually saying to you guys trading now in the debt market. What's the latest about FX in terms of uh, the worries of, of investors, especially the offshore investors uh, right now? Okay, now we are seeing a lot of demand, and the, the market isn't as liquid. So, uh, as I yesterday, we saw it inch up to 365 levels. Now, that is demand uh, pool, actually. We, we are seeing a lot of demand, supply is, is lean, and then we are going to see that happen. We know the central bank has been trying a lot to make sure the system is liquid. The interventions, have, uh, they've continued. They've been meeting some demands, but we still see a lot. In this uh, November, we have a lot of maturities in, from the NDF part, and then we're going to see a lot of, of uh, demands coming to this system. So now it's uh, it's a worry, it's, it, it's a, a, a bit of a worry now for the, for the FX, because already we are already seen 365, we have about $835 million maturing in NDFs, which is going to ease the system, because these players are still living. So for FX, it's, uh, this is, this is uh, a worrying time for FX. So um, if you talk about those worries, I see that in the past few, uh, in about a week plus now, we haven't really seen any intervention from the CBN. What do you think is happening? I see a lot of the traders still making tenders at the, on Broad Street and Custom Street precisely now, uh, almost every day. Yeah, the CBN has been interve intervening. There was a retail FX on, on Friday. Uh, the usual OC has continued. But then we're talking about the quantum of uh, request that's eating the system. Of course, CBN is trying their best. They've drawn down reserves uh, reasonably, and uh, we don't want to overdraw that, actually. But the, setup, the governor has an assured horse. You know, he was in London uh, that, uh, a few weeks back, and he said he's going to defend the Naira if it means drawing down the, the, the FX reserve. So at this point, the Central Bank is cautious. They don't want the Naira to depreciate so much. You know where we we're coming from from the last time we saw uh, Naira to the mm -hmm. to 500 levels. Mm -hmm. They don't want to see that any longer. So they're going to defend that with everything they've got. And that's why they've been drawing down the reserves. Ebenezer Lucia is the trader with UBA. Thank you so much for this interesting insight. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Well, so let's go for a short break and come back with the monetary side of plans that the federal government is given to manage the uh, projections for Nigeria and, of course, the global markets. And that's in a bit.
back and it is here right now. So the IMF World Bank meetings also had the presence of Nigeria's Central Bank Governor, Mr. Godwin Amoyefiele, where he centered uh, more on uh, the global numbers, the African numbers, which is the continent now, and of course the Nigerian numbers as regards to the growth rate. And so during his session with the media, he talked about some of those growth projections, trade tensions, and of course the implications on Nigeria, as well as the debt levels, which is really worrisome. Let's listen. Uh, like the minister also said, we seize the opportunity to discuss issues burden on the global economic outlook, as well as held various side meetings uh, with various uh, correspondent banks and international financial uh, institutions. Highlights basically at these meetings how to deal with the review of the global global growth, which um, um, was put at about 3.7% for 2018 uh, and 2019, and which is a drop from about 3.8% earlier forecast uh, during the April, April meetings. Uh, although the world economic outlook uh, projects growth uh, to be strong in 2018 uh, compared to 2016 and 17, Concerns were uh, observed about growth prospects, um, particularly in the near term, um, due to uh, certain actions that have been taken, some of which uh, include the monetary policy normalization by the United States, uh, which is forecast to continue till about 2020. And indeed, um, because of the monetary policy normalization, it's also even ex uh, there are talks going that some, some, some concerns were raised that the consequences or adverse consequences of the monetary policy normalization, if it eventually spreads, in fact, even to the Europe, that may even create more problems uh, for, for emerging uh, market economies. Trade tensions between the U.S. and China um, um, was also prominently discussed, as well as geopolitical tensions, um, which also remain elevated in different parts, parts of the world. Um, uh, for, for emerging market economies, it was also observed that the adverse consequences of the U.S. Uh, policy normalization has resulted in capital flow reversals, um, particularly for emerging markets, uh, resulting in, in some cases, um, currency depreciation in those economies. Um, we also found it also re that it has also resulted in interest rate hikes and monetary policy tightening, tightening measures in these uh, economies as well. Um, because the emerging markets uh, economies are price takers, it is expected that public debt service costs will rise uh, for the emerging market economies, uh, possibly resulting in weakening of assets in the uh, various banking systems and also weakening in financial conditions in, in the emerging market and development, um, emerging market and frontier, fr frontier economies. Concerns were raised about debt vulnerabilities, also particular as it affects the emerging and frontier markets. And um, although Nigeria debt, debt to GDP remains um, uh, fairly okay, uh, debt service concerns were raised, uh, whereas we also raised issues that we are doing everything possible. Um, to broaden the revenue base so as to improve the uh, tax to uh, GDP ratios. Um, in general, I think um, advice were, uh, were, were proffered at the, those meetings, particularly the IMFC as well as the World Bank Development Committee meetings, um, that countries must continue to build buffers and that them. Um, Economies, different, different uh, countries should also put in place or implement specific con or country-specific policies to protect against these shocks that uh, is considered will take quite uh, will take some time, um, um, and and its consequences might be adverse uh, on different uh, economies. CBN Governor Godwin and Mayfield. There's a lot going on right now. Uh, you've got the NSE market data happening now in Lagos. Uh, we'll be bringing you updates on that later in the day as to what the latest is on fintech and how you can trade, you know, remotely, electronically, on stocks, and of course, 
other instruments in this market. But then there's a whole lot that the federal government is doing. Channels television is where you get these details. And of course, the news table is set. That's all we have right now for you today on Business Morning. I'm Temple Asha Justin, sitting in here for both in the more fire episodes. But I will see you another time. Bye for now.